In today's beginner-friendly quick tutorial, I want to show you how I used a gradient in Photoshop to mimic natural light and add some colorful flair to this image. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. Today is a beginner-friendly quick tutorial to show you everything about gradients and how gradients can be used to create a lot of artistic options with your images. So enough of the jibber-jabber, let's dive into the Photoshop and begin the journey of learning everything we know about gradients. To get started, I want to update you that I'm using the most current version of Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop CC 2021. It's a part of the Adobe Creative Cloud program. I believe it was Photoshop CC 2018 where they made a change on how they categorize all the different gradients. So if you're using an older version of Photoshop, the fundamentals of the tools that I'm about to show you are the same. The only thing that will be different is the categorization of these different gradients, and we'll see that here in just a moment. So what is a gradient? Well, it's essentially a cascade between one color to another, where Photoshop will say, here's one color or color stop that you've chosen, here's the other, we're gonna cascade in between them, and Photoshop will populate the colors needed to cascade from one to the other and it will transition between the two. You can choose how that is drawn into the scene, where its angle is at, you can choose the different colors and so forth, but what's really cool about it is that whatever color you choose on the left of the scene, that's the color that will be associated to the darkest point within the image. And the color on the right will be associated to the highlights within the image itself. And this mimics any type of basic luminosity control you would see in Photoshop. So for like, a levels adjustment layer or a curves adjustment layer on the left represents the shadows. On the right, it represents the highlights. The same is true for the gradients itself. So the basic gradient tool, we get to that by hitting the hot key of the letter G, or you can navigate to this icon here in the tools palette window. When you click on it, it brings up all of these different menu controls. Let's go through these really briefly, and then we'll see a real world example of how I use gradients all the time in my work. So first, this option here is where we can choose all of the different gradients that are populated into Photoshop. This is what would look different for you in an older version of Photoshop. In an older version, you would just see these squares and you would see like two rows of them and they would be filled with all sorts of random colors. One of them uh, is like a whole bunch of rainbow colors and it's just, it's really quite bizarre. Those are the only pre-populated gradients that came by default into Photoshop. But I believe it was CC 2018 where Adobe essentially made a bunch of different gradients for you and then categorized them by colors. So you can start with these and then add your own colors, change them and so forth and work with the scene itself. So these three squares, let's go over these really quickly. The first one is foreground to background. So whatever your foreground background colors are, that's what's gonna cascade between the two. The second one is foreground to transparency, where essentially it's going to only use whatever your foreground color is and cascade that into nothingness. So it fades off and transitions out. This is the one that I use the most when I'm working on a layer mask to make something like a vignette. I want to use some black and let it fade into nothingness so that it will start hiding whatever that layer mask is trying to hide by painting black onto it. The last option is black to white purely. So those two colors are populated within this. If I click on this little that little square, let me hit cancel and go back one more time. If I click anywhere on this bar, it brings up the gradient editor so we can see the colors that are being chosen here. So this color of black, will be in the shadows or the deepest black point within the image. The color white will be in the brightest point within the image or the highlights. It's gonna cascade in between. If we move our mouse and see the little hand icon, we can click and make another color stop. So we can say, choose different colors that it cascades between all the way through to the final color in the highlights itself. If you don't wanna keep this color stop, you can just simply hit delete. If I click again and make a color stop right in the middle, I can choose and click here to choose any color in the color picker and let it cascade between those colors. So for instance, it's gonna go from black to red to white. It will cascade between all those colors as we choose. I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel. Or I can also, to delete this, I click delete, or I can just simply drag it down and it will go away. So that's how we add some colors into this gradient map editor and associate how it works within the scene. I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel. 
I'm gonna take you through the rest of these controls and then we'll draw a quick gradient. So the next section here for these five icons, this is the type of gradient that will be generated. Ultimately, it's shape, it's angle and so forth. So the first one is linear. So it's gonna cascade between white to black in a linear formation and you can choose the angle. The next one is radial. So you'll have a circle in the middle and it will cascade out circularly to the second color. The third one is angled. This is similar to radial, except it's going to go like counterclockwise. So you're going to have a hard edge right at that 90 degree. And that first color will start there and just start panning around until it fades into the other color and meets that hard edge. The fourth one is reflected. So you're going to have a color at the top and bottom and then a color right in the middle in between those two. And the last one is diamond. It's exactly the same as radial, except instead of it being a circle in the center, it's in the diamond shape. So arguably the two most popular that are used all the time is linear and radial. I don't think anybody ever uses diamond, but anyway, I'm sure it's there for a reason or somebody really does. <laughs> I'm going to get a comment. I love the diamond gradient. I use it all the time in my diamond gradient Photoshop work. Anyway, so linear and radial, those are the ones that are used most of the time. Now with the gradient tool itself, you have the blending mode option here where you can choose how the gradient is going to blend with the image in a similar way that you would choose layer blending modes over here in the layers window itself. Then the last options, you can choose the opacity of it. Reverse is just that. So right now it's black to white. If we click reverse, it's going to put white to black or just switch those two colors. But keep in mind, whatever color is on the left is represented in the shadows. Whatever color is on the right, Right is represented in the highlights. So if we were to reverse it, we would be putting white into the shadows of an image and black into the highlights. So you're going to get a really funky infrared looking kind of result with all of that. The last two options, dither and transparency. Dither is just adding some noise to it so that you don't get banding within it. Banding is essentially um, the concentric circles that you will see sometimes in artwork where it looks very pixelated and it goes out concentrically. That is just a problem of generating with the renderer in Photoshop. So adding noise to it will essentially overcome that banding. And then transparency, we already covered that and how it fades out into nothingness. So let's draw a gradient. Now, this is the, I would say the most powerful part of using the gradients tool itself is that you can not only draw the gradient and how you want it to go within the scene by clicking and drawing this line out, but you can choose the angle and you can choose the scale of how much the colors cascade in between each other. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to drag this line straight across as even to the horizon line as I can and bring it all the way to the opposite end of this document and let go. So now we're cascading between black to white and you can see the gray in between. And this was a full, let's say 100% scale between those two colors. I'm going to hit control or command and letter Z to go one step back in my history. Now I'm going to draw a line about halfway through the document. The transition or the scale is much shorter so that the white part of the gradient is way more favored than the black part of the gradient. Controller command, letter Z to go one step back. There we go. And now I'm gonna draw the line all the way past the edge of the document. Black is now being favored. The scale is like, let's say 400% now. When we drew halfway across, it was maybe 50. And when we drew it through the entire document, it was 100%. So that's what scale represents and how you can manually draw to favor one color over the other. But you can also change that angle. So we can do it at a diagonal. We can do multiple gradients, however we want it to be. We can draw that cascade and make the scale really big. We can make it really small and work with the gradient by choosing what type of gradient, the colors, the blending mode, the opacity, and so forth. That's the basic gradient tool. But I wanna show you a real world example on how I use the gradient. And I don't really use the gradient tool. I like to use an adjustment layer that does pretty much the same thing, but gives me way more creative and a specific strategic control of the gradient when I'm working with an image. So this image of my friend Stephanie, who I just recently met, she's really wonderful. I, I loved working with her. Her boyfriend's great. He and I got along really well. And her mother is an amazing costume designer. And I'm very excited for the future because I've hired her to create some costumes for a project that's upcoming. So that'll be coming soon to the channel in the next couple of months. I'm really excited to work with her. Stephanie was a blast. This is a natural light image that I photographed with a Canon EOS R using an RF 24 to 70 f 2.8 millimeter lens. I I liked the natural light that's coming in off of camera right and I let it cascade through the scene but I wanted some of that rich warm orange light flare like the sun is just almost right outside of the frame itself. Now I could have set up 
a flash in this scene and put an orange CTO gel onto it and let it flare into the lens a little bit, that would have taken a lot of extra time. I knew I could do it in post-production using a gradient. So let's show you how to do that. Now, there are two different gradient adjustment layer options. So when we come to the adjustment layer icon here in the layers window and click it, we have a gradient map and then gradient at the top. And this should really be relabeled gradient fill because that's what it is when we click it. But gradient map, I don't like using this one. It's very similar to what we just saw with the gradient tool itself, except you're very limited. You can't change the angle or the scale and so forth. You might be able to change the scale. You can change the colors, but not the angle. And it's just, it's very limited and very controlled on how it works. But the gradient fill, you have a lot of options artistically with this one. And this is the one that I like to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this. It's going to populate the gradient option icon here in the layers window with a layer mask. It's on a blending mode of normal by default. It pulls up the gradient fill dialog, hence this is why I think it should be relabeled gradient fill Adobe. And then we have all the same controls that we had just a moment ago with the gradient tool itself, but with a couple of key differences. So first we can choose the gradient so we can go to this category and choose all the different colors. If we were to click right in the center, it brings up the gradient editor so we can choose our colors and what we want it to be. We can choose the style of the gradient. So linear, radial, angle, and all that kind of stuff. We can choose the angle by dragging this around if we want to, or choosing a number and just typing it in. The scale, how big it cascades between those colors we can choose here, reverse and dither, align with layer. This is clicked by default. I want to uncheck this one. I'm gonna choose a radial gradient because I want to be able to make something that looks like a natural sun flare coming into this picture of Stephanie. So right now it's just a color of black. I'm gonna come down here to the color stop, click it, and then click this icon to bring up the color picker and then choose a color of orange like that for right now. Then hit okay and hit okay. Because I unchecked align with layer, now, if I click anywhere while the gradient fill dialog is open, if I click anywhere on this circle, I can actually position it and move it around. This is why I like to use this adjustment layer because let's say that the windows here and here, this is what I want to be illuminated by this gradient fill adjustment layer. So I can move that circle to be positioned right over that window in the upper right of this image and put it where it would naturally be if sun flare was coming into the scene. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay because I need to change the blending mode now of this adjustment layer to something that'll let it interact with the image to make it look real because it looks really bad right about now. So I'm gonna come up to the layer blending mode options here for the layer stack. I'm going to first start with screen. Screen is a wonderful option because it's going to let the colors fade out. So anything that's uh, really bright, it makes things brighter within the scene itself. So if I double click the icon here again, pull up the gradient fill dialog. Now I can move it around. I can change this to be wherever I need it to be so that I can position over that window. I can bring it down here to the other big window that was just right outside the camera itself. I can make two of these and position them around, but let's, change the scale of this to have it be a little bit stronger into the scene and let's add some more colors to make it a little bit more realistic because again we're just using one color and that could be fine if that's the way you like it but i would prefer to add more realistic colors that makes it feel like the sun is just outside the frame itself so to change those colors i need to come up to the gradient fill dialog click anywhere in here that'll bring up the gradient editor so let's start with the first color stop. And yes, this color stop is being associated into the shadows within the scene, but because we changed the blending mode to screen, this is no longer really that relevant because ultimately now just think about it from a perspective of whatever colors we choose, it's gonna cascade between those. So I'm gonna click the color picker and I'm gonna choose something that is a really bright, not pure white, but something that's that white, yellow, orange tone, like it's the hot core center of the light source itself, and then hit okay. Now I'm gonna make a new color stop somewhere very close to this one so it cascades through these different colors very evenly and very close in that transition. So clicking, I get the same color, come down to this option. Now I'm gonna choose a little bit more of a richer tone of orange. Then make another one and choose another richer tone of color, getting into those darker tones as we travel across the spectrum. And then finally end up with something like that. So we're starting with this hot white and transitioning into a darker tone that fades into transparency. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now again, while this option is open, I can click it and move it about. So as you can see, if I wanted to make it look like the sun was setting right inside that window, I can put the hot white core right there and then let it transition out. If I increase the scale of this, let's say to like 
363%. Then, wow, the sun is right there. It's that window itself is the sun, right? That's too big. So let's pull it down to maybe like 210. And as you can see, the scale makes it feel more natural like the light is cascading in. If we click it and move it about, we don't have to continue to mess around with scale. We can just say, okay, great. I want it to be like this and position over here and drag it further away, pull it further into the scene and get it wherever we need it to be. And keep in mind, we also have other options like the opacity of this blending mode. So let's go, I'm sorry, this adjustment layer. So I'm hitting okay. I can change the opacity and pull this down just a little bit so it isn't as powerful and as strong. And I can change the colors, I can change the angle. There's so much control that I have by simply using this one adjustment layer, understanding why things work in Photoshop with the layer blending modes. And then of course, choosing these different colors that go into the scene to make it feel like a natural result of the light itself. Hitting okay, this is it. So instead of taking the time to add another strobe on set, I can simply use one tool in Photoshop to be able to bring all of those artistic options to my image. Let's finish up this basic tutorial today with some final thoughts. One of the mantras of Photoshop that I talk about all the time when I teach, I've said it in many different videos on this channel, is that you have to learn why things work in Photoshop. And I just said it a moment ago. And it's so important if you want to go on the journey of digital photo editing, because when you learn how some of these basic tools that have been around in Photoshop for a long time, when you learn all the ways that they can be utilized, you expand your limits as an artist even further so that there's more and more that you can do. If you're just stepping into photography for the first time, Time, that image that I just showed you was photographed in natural light. All I needed was a camera and a lens. Yes, the image was retouched, but you just saw how I was able to essentially add a second light into the scene besides the natural light so that I didn't have to bring another strobe on set and work with all of that and change the flow of the shoot. I could simply just use Photoshop to achieve that. I know there's some purists in photography that still frown upon digital photo editing and feel that it gets away from the purity of the art of photography itself. And that's, uh, I, being honest, a discussion for another time because to me, the art of photography is incredibly powerful. And I love being a photographer. I love capturing images that will be preserved for all time. But to me, I want to complete that equation of art by working with that image in Photoshop to bring all of the elements that my imagination can conceive to reality or to life with the artwork itself. That's the end of this tutorial today. If you like the content you found in this video, make sure to give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel because new content debuts each week in photography and Photoshop education. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified of that new content when you return to the YouTubes. Thanks for watching today and until next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.